Hey guys, recently I needed to create a star field for a side scroller pet project of mine and the star field needed to be stylized and, and uh, I needed to have parallax effect between the stars so uh, the star field that comes with Unreal is basically just a texture wrapped on a sphere and I needed something more than that so I decided to create the star field in Houdini and I just want to show you quickly how, how I did it now if you already know Houdini this will look super super basic um, so uh, this video is mostly for people that are are new to Houdini or uh, for people that are looking uh, into Houdini and uh, it's not a tutorial because I'm not going to go through every single step but I just want to show the advantages of uh, procedural workflow and to show you how uh, much flexibility you can have uh, in Houdini and this is especially important now that, that Houdini launched their uh, indie version which is just uh, $199 per month and it's a really really good offer and uh, you should definitely take take a look at Houdini it's super nice for uh, data management but also to create this kind of effects where um, where it gives you um, a lot of flexibility in the workflow so uh, this being Houdini there are a lot uh, lots of ways to do what I'm going to show you um, so I'm just going to show you the, the the method that I found the simplest and and the most uh, flexible now just to give you a bit of background info um, this is uh, the far background image of, of the mountains and I'm going to copy paste those throughout the level and so the stars will come somewhere here on top and they're going to be copy pasted as well so um, I guess normally to create uh, this, type, this type of effect you would uh, maybe take a plane and you would scale it down and then do a lot of copy pasting around and um, you know try to get some some diversity and some some ran randomness in the look so if we keep doing this for uh, half an hour let's say we might get something um, you got the you got the idea now the problem with this approach is that first it takes a lot of time it's boring and it gives you zero flexibility so if I need to change something to one of these stars I'd have to uh, propagate the change manually, copy paste the change manually on every star. So it's just not a nice way to create uh, this, uh, this type of effect. So a better way to do it, I think, is, um, is to create a procedural system. And I'm going to start, oops, sorry. I'm going to start by adding a geometry node. And if you need geometry node, it's just a container where you can put a lot of uh, all the, all the all the nodes that are creating that uh, that geometry so i'm going to call this uh, star field star field okay let's dive, dive inside and i don't need this node this is used to import geometry i don't need it so first i want to create the volume where the stars are going to be uh, instantiated so i'm going to create a box and um, so this box is going to represent uh, the volume and now I want to create a transform node and what the transform node does, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it allows me to uh, easily uh, scale and translate and rotate uh, the geometry. Now I could have done the same uh, here directly in, um, in the box sop node, but just to keep um, the network a bit cleaner, I, I prefer to add uh, an extra node. So I just want to move the pivot uh, from the front down okay so in this way I can scale it um, and make sure that the box stays in the right place so let's say something like this and something like this okay so over this surface I want to instantiate um, my stars and for that I'm gonna I'm gonna need to um, to create a bunch of points inside this uh, this volume and Houdini has a handy node for that called uh, points uh, points on volume here it is and with the default settings what this does is creating tons of points as you can see it's super dense um, and we of course don't want this so we can increase the point separation which is gonna decrease the, the final point number and we can change uh, the jitter scale a bit so we get uh, some some randomness 
So let's say something like this. Um, so now we have our volume. Uh, the cool thing is that now you can go and um, change this and as you can see, they, um, the, uh, the, the points are uh, recalculated inside. So this is pretty flexible. Okay, now that we have our, uh, our points and our, our, our star uh, volume, we need to create a star and I'm gonna use a grid node. Okay, let me change the orientation and we don't need that many subdivisions, of course. So this is fine. We can decrease it a bit. Maybe it's something like this. Okay, so this is gonna be our star. We can call it star. And let's call this volume. Okay, so now we need to copy or to instantiate this um, plane over the, over the points. And again, Houdini has a very handy node called uh, copy soap. And what the copy soap does, um, it takes the first input. So whatever you plug here is gonna copy over the points of whatever you plug in the second input. So if we do like this, you can see that um, our mesh is now copied um, over the points. So this starts to look like something that I want. Now, of course, it would be nice to have some randomness um, between the stars. And we can um, easily do that by first we need another transfer node. And again, this is something that we could have done directly in here, but this just keeps um, the, the network a bit uh, cleaner. Okay, so let's call this rand scale because we're gonna use this node to randomize the scale. Now, if I go here and then I scale this one, you can see that all of uh, the stars are scaled. But what we want, we want to be able to scale every single star with a different uh, number. So for that, we can use uh, the stamp attributes from, um, from the copy node. So first we need to enable the stamps. So this, these attributes are gonna uh, be, be able to be referenced from other nodes. And let's call this one uh, rand scale. And for the value, what I need, uh, and I'm gonna explain to you in a second, um, what this does. Dollar, where is the dollar sign? Dollar TT, and let's say, oops something like like this okay so the fit uh, zero to one uh, puts this um, uh, yeah creates uh, makes this value stay between this uh, these two values and uh, dollar pt is uh, the, the point number so if I would go here and enable is it enable the point number you can see that every point has a unique number and that's what we actually need um, in order to get a unique size for every every point. So with this attribute created, we can go to our uh, random scale and in the uniform, we need to get, uh, we need to get that uh, attribute. So let's go to our copy node and then, oops, sorry. And then we need the name of, uh, of the attribute, which needs to be between uh, K. And finally, we finish with a zero. Okay, so let me get this out. Okay, so as you can see, um, the size is randomized. It's not, uh, the difference is not big enough. So we can quickly go and Let's try something between 0, 2 and maybe 0, 5. Okay, so now we, we have something that um, looks like a, like a star field. It has some parallax effect um, when, uh, when the camera moves around. Um, like I said, we can go and oops, increase, um, increase this one, maybe make it a bit longer. And we can also increase the number of, uh, of stars a bit. So we can have something like this. Okay, so now I needed something, uh, one more thing for, uh, for the effect. I needed when the stars appear during the night, 
I wanted the stars to fade in randomly so not, not all the stars are going to appear at the same time and for that I'm using a material and I need a random color um, for every star so I can fade it create a mask from, from, uh, from the color and then fade it based on, on that, that value so I basically need just uh, let's say the red channel just one, one, one value um, and for that we need to, to create a um, color attribute and we're going to use a point swap okay and we need to add the color and over here like I said I need something unique for every um, uh, for every for every star so again oops since I need a random and um, what was it dollar uh, dx and between 0 0.01 oops and 1 okay and I can delete this too okay so as you can see this gave me a random color uh, for every star and you can see that the entire star has, has a single color now TX is um, the primitive which in Houdini translates to polygons if I would put uh, $PT which is the point number you can see that the star is no longer uh, no longer has a uniform color because now every point has a random random color and we don't want that so we're gonna go back to uh, primitives and also just to verify this you can go to the detail panel and you can see that every fourth uh, uh, yeah in groups of four polygons uh, they have the same the same color so these four have uh, points sorry uh, have this this color so these four points have this color and they're all uh, uniform but also um, also ran random okay so this is pretty cool one thing I forgot um, is to add um, the UVs so I'm gonna want to uh, have a, a texture map and for that we just need to uh, add the UV um, UV projection UV project and we need to do it on the original um, object and that oops and then it's gonna propagate uh, everywhere and um, initialize and just to oops sorry to verify it we can put a oops quick shade node over here and uh, as you can see um, the texture is applied for uh, for every star so this is just one texture that that um, is going to be used a uh, one uh, sorry one uh, one uv map that's going to be used okay so we have this uh, this is pretty much what i have for for the game uh, the cool thing is that now if you need let's say uh, the stars to have a sphere uh, sh the shape of uh, of a sphere that's really easy to do you do like this and we can increase the ra uh, radius uh, let me just hide the other stuff and you can see now you have a um, completely different um, uh, volume um, same way if you need to have something different than, uh, than the plane let's say you want uh, cubes you can get oops, you can get a box and get this one here and you get something like uh, like this so this gives I say a lot of flexibility and um, it was pretty cool because I had to go back a few times let me just get uh, back to this okay so yeah the cool thing was that you know of course I had to do some iterations over it and go go back and forth and I just had to change a few parameters to get um, a totally different uh, uh, get a totally different look so um, yeah that was just a very quick um, intro and um, I hope you found it interesting and I really recommend to take a look at, at Houdini because it's a really good, good software for uh, things like this. Thank you.